Matt Taibbi went on with Mehdi Hassan. And I'm just going to show you the best parts right up front because the rest of it sucks. The rest of it sucks. I tried to watch it and I couldn't get through it. Okay, so so here, here's the best part. I don't want to bury... My favorite part was this. But this That's what the that. email show that you posted. They don't the, demand but, anything, do they? Everybody but you knows. didn't, Matt. That's the problem. You've put oh, you... Because, because, I, you out, because, I, wait, wait, because you outlined stop, stop, which... I'll stop. I'll stop. I have to stop. I, mix, I messed up. I buried... I, I fucked up. This is actually what it was like. Oh. So this is what it was like. Oh, but, yeah. That's what the that. email show that you posted. They don't the, demand but, anything, but, do they? Everybody but you knows. didn't, Matt. That's the problem. You've put you... Because, I, but you, I, because, because I... Because you outlined did which ones the Biden team did. The well, maybe you should ask yourself why it is you didn't have it. So of what you want so later. I don't so have to. Much. Oh my God. So it sounds like you are. With, with, out of interest, Matt, I'm the, not. The, 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 you say it yourself. Those are your words in the Twitter files. But communicating so the, is not rolling the, over, Matt. All I'm saying is I don't see the evidence. If I saw evidence. So, so Turncoat <laughs> Joe put that together. That's, uh, that's edited together, but that gives you a good representation of what it was like. Like they were haggling over a carpet in a Middle Eastern bazaar? And, yes. <laughs> my friend! <laughs> Buddy! My friend! <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so the, the point is... That Mehdi Hassan is a complete tool of the establishment, and he brought Matt on. I have Matt has the worst judgment, about, Yo, and he's the worst at defending himself. <laughs> I, it, what a bad call all the way around. That guy's his own worst enemy. So he goes on this show, and he has Matt. He had Mehdi talk over him, and he found three minor inaccuracies in his Twitter files reporting, and Mehdi made it look like it. It totally discredited everything Matt Taibbi did. So Matt gets in here. I want to show you the good part. Here's the here's the good part that we enjoyed. So Matt gets this in. Your own words, Matt. You crossed that line and Musk has you. Well, the, Those are your the, words. The hilarity of this coming from MSNBC, which did nothing but vomit up uh, fake Russiagate stories that came straight from the FBI for six consecutive years that you guys still haven't apologized Great. for. Uh, Great. Is, I, I, is Finally, somebody said that on MSNBC. Yeah. Finally, somebody got to say that on MSNBC. So high five to Matt Taibbi. He made a little lemonade out of a bad decision to go on, on the show. And <sighs> and uh, he got to say that. So that's nice. And they're trying to make it look like so Mehdi Hassan is pushing that lie that we already debunked from the congresswoman about that somehow Matt Taibbi already admitted that he shouldn't have done this story. Isn't it amazing, Kurt, what's going on with this? He he does a story that reveals the government, the, the intelligence agencies colluding to suppress free speech, and everybody's mad at the, at the whistleblower. This is why you need whistleblower protections, because even the media is going to hate the whistleblower. He's the whistleblower, and they're trying to make it look like he's doing some PR jaunt for Elon Musk, because Elon Musk gave him access to the Twitter files. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, how else is he going to get access to the Twitter files? And so they don't want to talk about the story. They want to talk about everything else. They want to talk about how he shouldn't have done the story. They want to talk about this. And Why then, did you not do the story? So so he says that. So he, so it was great. Let's hear him say it again. Let's hear him say it. words, Matt. You crossed that line and Musk has well, you. The, Those the, are your the, words. The, the hilarity of this coming from MSNBC, which did nothing but vomit up uh Fake Russiagate stories that came straight from the FBI for six great. consecutive years that you guys still haven't apologized great. for. Uh, great. Is, I, I, is I wasn't there in that period, so I've got nothing to apologize. I'm asking you. So he's like, I, I wasn't there. He wasn't there. <laughs> no, you're at the news station that did that for has been doing that for seven straight years, making up stuff and repeating CIA talking points and FBI talking points un, uh, unskeptically. <laughs> Mitty, do you think they're not doing that now? It, they're still doing it. Right. In fact, just before he got there. In fact, what you're doing right now, Mehdi, is you're continuing to repeat talking points coming from the establishment and you're attacking a whistleblower, which is what Matt Taibbi actually is. Well, I wouldn't say he's a whistleblower, but he's blowing the whistle on the censorship. If you just were saying the thing that happened, honestly, I, I'm yeah. so happy with that. He's doing reporting. <laughs> right. So he so his defense is, well, I wasn't at MSNBC yet. 
Yeah, but he certainly did write about Rush. So here he is. I defy any of you to read the special counsel's report, meaning Mueller, and conclude that the president did not lie. Lie and lie again. He lied about Russian interference in the 2016 election. He lied about the campaign's contacts with Russians. He lied about covering up the campaign. So as M Michael Tracy caught that, he says, by April 2019, the metamorphosis was nearly complete. Medi found himself desperately pleading for Nancy Pelosi <laughs> to impeach Donald Trump over his drastically dastardly Russian contacts. In this, Medi has become a passionate believer in Robert Mueller, but you know, from the left. <laughs> so here, uh, then in March 22, it happened again. His funniest tweet ever. The tweet that got him inducted into the MSNBC Hall of Fame sealed the deal on his Peacock's streaming show, probably got excitedly DM'd too to Democratic House staff. The journey, dear friends, was complete. So My Michael Tracy did a funny Twitter thread about how he went from an unknown Al Jazeera reporter to becoming an MSNBC host and all the stuff, you, all the propaganda you have to do. And this was part of it. And then this is the latest. Deeply disappointed to see the Palestinian parties in the Kisnet, Knesset, uh, boycott Zelensky's speech and blame NATO, not Putin, for imposing this war on Ukraine. No excuse for this kind of awful behavior. So he turns on the Palestinians. So he's telling, he's wow. showing you he's willing to do that. Can you imagine having to write propaganda on spec, hoping you, to get a job? That, right. That's what that is. Right. Hoping you get picked from all the submissions. Of <laughs> So there he throws Palestinians under the bus and uh, forwards the lie about Ukraine war. Uh, here's another one. Uh, Mehdi Hassan's defense for saying zilch about MSNBC's Russiagate propaganda is that he wasn't there at that period. Now that he is here, he's taking part by exploring issues such as did Russian trolls <laughs> undermine the 2017 <laughs> Women's March? That's literally a story he's doing. <laughs> now that he is there, this is what he's doing. Oh. So this is who these people are. And that's why it was so, what a bad decision Matt to say. Who the fuck is advising Matt Taibbi? He's got bad advisors and his own picker is horrible. To go on this show, you thought this was going to go good for you? You didn't think, you didn't know him. He really, so anyway. So oh. here's, <laughs> here's one more part that I liked. Here we go. To leave it there, Matt. Thank you for appearing on the show. What, what, uh, what about you? your Hunter, the Hunter Biden story? Appreciate, you, appreciate you your time. Uh, I don't Russian think I've ever written about the Hunter Biden story, so maybe you should apologize oh, yeah, to me for putting, for putting words in my mouth. You said at the beginning I put words. I never said a word about the Hunter Biden story, but we will be right back. After leaving there, Matt, thank you for. So, well, he did talk about the Hunter Biden. So, first of all, the first thing, what, what he's doing is I never said a word about the Hunter Biden laptop story. So, you were silent on the entire media's censorship of a true story in order to swing an election result, you you were silent on that. So that's what he's admitting, A, but it's not even true because he did write about it because uh, uh, Aaron Maté caught this too. He said, a re here's Mehdi Hassan tweeting about it, a reminder that both the Murdoch-owned Fox and the Murdoch-owned Wall Street Journal turned down the Hunter Biden laptop story, and the reporter who wrote the story for the Murdoch-owned New York Post wouldn't put their name on it. But sure, it was a liberal media conspiracy to suppress it. So there he is endorsing suppressing the Hunter Biden laptop. He did write about it. He wrote about it publicly for his followers. There it is. He's a reporter. He wrote on his social media conveying his politics, his his reporting to his followers, just like Matt Taibbi did his Twitter files reporting on Twitter. Here's Mehdi Hassan doing the same thing, and then he, but he lied about it. But it, oh, he well, he wasn't. Uh, he, there, Matt. he didn't say anything about it. He lied. He did say something about it. There he is. That's with his blue check saying that he's saying that he's <laughs> he's, he's not saying that in a text to a friend. He didn't write that in his diary. He wrote that with his blue check public Twitter Twitter account. And then Brown here, he says, even if every word of the New York Post reporting on Hunter Biden is true, every word of it, it still wouldn't equate to 1% of the corruption stories involving Trump, Trump family members, Trump administrative, Trump. And my. So then so then he then excuses, even if it's true, I don't care that they suppressed it. So he's OK. First, he lies and says they, they did it. And that this is, he said it should be, this is Russian disinformation. And down here he's saying, even if it isn't, I don't care. Let's uh, suppress it anyway. Yeah, that's a common, uh, that's called the old Sam Harris. Boy, the irony. The irony. Mehdi and Sam Harris would see eye to eye. Eye to day. eye. And so here is Mehdi Hassan 
And he's on tell. This is when he's trying to make a name for himself in England. And he goes at the Daily Mail newspaper. Watch this. He he says that they're causing division in the country. They hate Britain and they hate gays. And watch what he says. So let's have the debate about who hates Britain more, because it isn't a dead Jewish refugee from Belgium who served in the Royal Navy. It's the immigrant bashing, woman hating, Muslim smearing, NHS undermining, gay baiting Daily Mail. <laughs> He called all those, like the woman hating, gay bashing, gay blah, 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 the Muslim hating, the Daily Mail. Well, the interesting thing was, after he said that on television, mm -hmm. uh, I think this guy, or, or the Daily Mail, revealed so that he had recently sent them a letter asking for employment to the Daily Mail. He was at the New Statesman at the time. I think he was an editor there, and he wanted to get it a better, bigger, more prestige, I guess. And so he wrote that, and I'll read you a little bit of it. Here's a little bit of it. He says, my name is Mehdi Assad. I'm the New Statesman senior political editor. My good friend Peter Osborne suggests I drop you a line. I'm very keen to write for the Daily Mail. I'm very keen to write for this <laughs> paper that he just trashed on television, okay? <laughs> he says, although I am on but the this left. this before he wasn't hired? This is before, he okay. was never hired at the Daily Mail. So he applied, was not hired, hired, then was on this thing later. That, then he goes on this TV show and says this. Okay. Although I am on the left of the political spectrum and disagree with the male's editorial line on a range of issues, I have always admired the paper's passion, rigor, boldness, and, of course, news values. <laughs> I believe in the male has a vitally important role to play in the national debate. I admire your relentless focus on the need for integrity and moral pub morality in public life and your outspoken defense of faith and Christian culture in the face of attacks from militant atheists and secularists. I also believe, as does Peter, that I could be a fresh and passionate, not to mention polemic and contrarian voice on the comment and feature paces of your award-winning newspaper. So there he is saying, look, I... Wow, he, he didn't forget to work the balls on that one. Boy, no kidding, right? Then he goes on, he goes, for the record, I am not a labor tribalist, and I am often ultra-critical of the left, especially on social and moral issues, where my fellow leftists and liberals have lost touch with their own traditions and with the great British public. In my column in this week's issue of the New Statesman, for example, I offer a critique of the five labor leadership candidates and their various inadequacies, including them all, of lacking what George Bush Sr. once called the vision thing. So he's quoting George Bush to critique lefties in Britain, and then he says, I could therefore write pieces for the mail critical of labor and the left from the the inside well, like look i'm a lefty but i could shit on them in you know, your right-wing newspaper i could shit on them from the left that the first part of that i thought was pretty sniveling but then like that part i'm like jesus christ dude gets better and then he goes i am also attracted by the male social conservatism on issues like marriage the family abortion and teenage pregnancies i'd like to write a piece for the male making the left-wing case against abortion That's who Mehdi Hassan is. He's a, he's a piece of shit for hire. He's a propagandist tool of whoever will pay him. And he's had his eyes on getting a job at MSNBC for, since, I guess, he was born. And he got one. Yeah. And so he went after Matt Taibbi. And you want to see one more thing about Mehdi Hassan? Here it is. Ready? Here we go. Here's, here's what... Islam, the ends... So if you're not a Muslim to him, you're a dog. You're a, and a, worse, you're a dog lover. And a homosexual. Watch this. And yeah. you like music, probably. He pretty much nailed us. Yeah, watch this. <laughs> Islam, the... Uh, Don't justify the means. This idea is totally alien to Islam. In Islam, what is halal is halal. What is haram is haram. We do not bend our law, our morality, for our short-term <laughs> aims. Never. <laughs> and we never lose the moral high ground. If we know anything of Shia the Muhammad, of Shia the Ali, of Shia the Hassan, of Shia the Hussein, we know that keeping the moral high ground is key. Once we lose the moral high ground, we are no different from the rest of the non-Muslims, from the rest of those human beings who live their lives as animals. So if you're not a Muslim, you live, the rest of the world lives their lives as animals, bending any rule to fulfill any desire. So if you're not a Muslim, you're an, um, you're an animal, according to Mehdi. Bending any rule to fulfill any desire. Once we do that, we are lost. Is that it? Islam. To believe is to know. To disbelieve is not to know. That is what it fundamentally comes down to. It is to remain ignorant. To cover up knowledge. After all, what is Carter? 
kafir comes from the root word, which means to cover up, to conceal. The kafir <laughs> is the one who covers up that knowledge which is clear. Like the Twitter files? The French Orientalist scholar Lamens, he once wrote that the Quran is not far from considering unbelief, disbelief as an infirmity, as an illness, as a disease of the human mind. Subhanallah. Non Muslims point this out. <laughs> How, how does we, <laughs> here, here we go? So if you're an atheist or a kafir, of course the kafir, the disbelievers, the disbelievers, the atheists who remain deaf and stubborn to the teachings of Islam, the rational message of the Quran, they are described in the Quran as quote a people of no intelligence. Allah describes them as not of no morality, not of no belief, people of no intelligence because they are incapable of the intellectual effort it requires to shake off those blind prejudices, to shake off those easy assumptions about this world, about the existence of God. In this respect, the Quran describes the atheists as cattle. As cattle of those who... So he's, he's calling you, if you're an atheist, that says the Quran describes them as cattle. Cattle! Well, if there's any consolation, he doesn't mean anything he's ever said. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. And do not stop and wonder about this world. All of these ulama unanimously agree that at the very minimum, if Yazid was not a kafir, then at the very minimum, he was a fasir, a transgressor, a breaker of Islamic laws, a corrupt individual, a tyrant, a killer, a drunkard, a dog lover, a music lover, <laughs> a homosexual, a pedophile. Some people call me Maurice. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, who are you calling a fasic? <laughs> so there he is saying that if you're you're a, a, a you're a homosexual, you're a music lover and a dog lover. So um, that's you're you're the devil. All of those things make devil, you the devil if you're I'm a, a dog lover, if you're a music lover, or a homosexual. <laughs> A sexual deviant on yeah. the run. <laughs> yeah. So it's a homosexual slept with his own mother. And a homosexual equal to someone who sleeps with their own mother or a pedophile. What if they looked at that's, what that, if they looked at MILF porn? That's what he <laughs> but that's what Medi that's so that's who Medi is. When he wanted to please that audience, that's what he says. When he wants to please the MSNBC audience, he says the opposite. Well, you know how he's not that is because like that he's there's no way someone who believes that would be able to be doing what he's right. doing now. That's great. At, at he doesn't all. believe anything. He doesn't believe it. Oh, believe, what country is he from? He uh, believes get out of wherever the hell that is and hit the big time. <laughs> yeah. So Medi once tweeted this out. It said, you boys have it easy. I get called an Assad apologist and an Al Qaeda apologist at the same time. Well, that's funny because he actually wrote an article where he called people telling the truth about what was happening in Syria, Assad apologists. <laughs> and I, I said, that's weird, because you literally wrote an entire article smearing anti-Syrian war activists and truth-tellers as, as Assad apologists. It's even in the title huh. of, the, of the article. I know you're pro-Syrian war, but you really are shitty at gaslighting about it. And of course, he blocked me. So this was the tweet I was responding to. And I showed the article he wrote, and it was... It, it was called that you're sorry, you're a sod apologist. That that was the headline of the article he wrote at the intercept. And so I reminded him of it and he blocked me. That's the guy who can win any argument, by the way. He just wrote a book on how My to friend, win. my friend. <laughs> he just wrote a book. Buddy. He just wrote a book. <laughs> he just wrote a book on how to win any argument. And as soon as I reminded him that he wrote an article uh calling people a sod apologist in the title. He well, blocked me. So that's know, who. So now you know who Mehdi Hassan is. You know who must be really upset, like really upset with him? Old school Mehdi Hassan fans. <laughs> <laughs> he so, <went> acoustic. <laughs> so Matt Taibbi made the mistake of going on MSNBC. And, you know, he's going on establishment media after he just blew the lid off the fact that the established. He's blowing the lid off the establishment, censoring people on Twitter in conjunction with this intelligence community, FBI and CIA and the government and political parties and other people like the FDA. And it's horrible. I believe they called it Project Nothing Burger. Yes. Yeah, so, so the big thing is to, the establishment doesn't want you to know about this because they want to keep on censoring you. And so now they're attacking Matt Taibbi.
Go to JimmyDoor.com to see my new stand-up special, COVID Lies Are Funny. For only $10, you get to become a premium member, too. And come see us do our live shows. We're going to be doing stand-up comedy in Milwaukee, Nashville, Honolulu, Los Angeles, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, New York, Coho's, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Baltimore, Maryland, and more. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets. 